out our new merch store at www.shotaffectspodcast.com where you can find our merch with shirts dedicated to each episode you love. Check it out today and support a Shot of Facts merch. So, Lemmys, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm uh, I'm gonna just tell a little. I'll be 32 on Monday. Look, that's fine. <laughs> like, you put 30 years young. I was just like, yeah, I kept up in my bio that I'm still 30, but I'm not. <laughs> but no, that is, and you look great, okay? Thank you. I was just like, I ain't 30 no more, but I'm going to wear it out, honey. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that's right. <laughs> but my first question to you, actually, since you are in the fashion industry and you've been in there for, well, a part of it for the past two decades, I want to ask you, when it comes to innovation and entrepreneurship, how would you come up with new business ventures, especially in like the fashion industry, with trying to create something new that is not seen yet or not in the market yet? So a business or a clothing line, because this, you know, is different because like for me, what I think about when I think about entrepreneurship and I think about business and fashion business, is it goes a bit way beyond clothing. You know, it go it can be into the education realm, it can be in the mentorship realm, it can be a service based thing. So um, I think that you have to make your business like I like your lifestyle. For me, I'm a I'm an education person, I'm a teacher. So I what I did was I made several different businesses that all honestly have the same thing. Like the Black Girls Designer Club is education and resources and stuff like that for young women. LC Apparel Consultant is more for, you know, adult learning and it's a service-based business, an education business. You know, it also has mentorship and training in it. And then the Black Fashion Podcast is the same thing, you know? So it's just like, it's just taking those base foundations of different things and putting them in different areas. Media, non-for-profit, service-based, product-based. I have like a designer workbook where people can go in and like write their designs down and pull their color palettes out, you know? I have um, pattern making packages where I bring like, I put all these different things together like to make a complete package i made sloper packages so it's really just taking one item and doing everything around their product and service base and whatever else you can offer your consumer like how can i give somebody a complete fashion lifestyle i'm gonna take i'm gonna give you all your fashion needs i'm gonna give you a clothing brand i'm gonna give you education i'm gonna give you service i'm gonna give you media like i'm gonna give you everything does that make sense oh yeah definitely so i see that you mentioned mentorship and one of the things that help create your I have fashion business or overall entrepreneurship. So how can you find mentorship in your niche market? Let's say for the fashion industry, how can you find some mentorship or leadership that you can look and get help from? Um, I hate to say this, but it's like you almost gotta pay for it if you're not a child, okay? Um, and I learned that um, as children, cause I have Black Girls Designer Club is a mentorship program for children so it's people you know well people kids from six all the way up to like 23 now for them that's free you know and that's a non-for-profit though so we got to get funding in in order to even support that business but i can give my time mentorship is my time which i can give away now in adulthood when people have you know like bills and stuff like that it's difficult but there are a lot of companies and one one woman shows and one man shows that offer mentorship training and coaching now the thing is sometimes it's out of your reach because it's too expensive but then you have to learn how to sacrifice and live within your means and just budget out your money because my initial reaction to when i i heard a woman speak and i was like i want her to be my mentor i want her to be my coach but that was the service that she offered and when i got the pricing it was like almost four grand and I was just like for mentorship a mentorship like a coaching was like four grand I'm like I don't got that but it made sense to what she said to me she was like if I'm doing my job as your mentor you will be able to afford it and she was absolutely right because once I made that initial deposit and I began working with her and she began you know mentoring me and helping me grow my business and grow myself as a person I was able to make more money so as an adult you do have to figure out a way to work it into your budget because that is another adult's time that they can be putting into their family, you know, their household, their income. So as a child, if it was something you was doing, you don't have to pay. But as an adult, it's like, and honestly, to get a really good mentor and someone that's actually going to be beneficial in your life and make you some money and stuff like that, you have to pay for it. Yeah, I think that's all with 
taking your business seriously as well too. Mm -hmm. Some people don't want to invest in their own businesses. Oh, yeah. I, I think mentorship, things of that sort, that is all an investment. It is. So I, I definitely, that was just like, who the hell gonna pay this? <laughs> <laughs> and I was fresh out of being laid off. You know, I didn't have no unemployment. I literally, I had no strand of revenue besides myself, but she made the, the amazing point. If I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, you will. And she was absolutely right. Hmm. Now and let me I was able to pay that balance. I was able to pay that bill every month on time hmm. after that initial meeting. Yeah. Hmm. But let me ask you a question. So, how do you feel as a black creative in the fashion industry? Do you feel like you're not represented enough? Do you feel like you're overshadowed, or how do you also feel about appropriation when it comes to trends in fashion as well? I don't think that we're represented enough in fashion, but that's also the reason why I started LC Apparel Consulting. Um, I can honestly sit here and say that I have over 200 black women designers that I'm creating products for. So I don't think that we're represented enough in the industry, but I'm working on getting us there. And I'm doing that with the help of education too, because visibility is sometimes all about who you know. You know, and what I do is I make sure that I share my network with my clients. Like this person can do your PR. This person can do your marketing. Tap into these influences. And I'm constantly giving education and advice to get us that visibility because the visibility is not there. We need it, but it takes time. And we're going up against these brands that have been around for umpteen years. So right now it's just like we're in a good place, in my opinion, like when it comes to black designers and Black designers getting out there, but we are competing with what 80 years. Like, so it's just like, I think that we're in a good place, but it's like, we cannot have the visibility of a brand that's been out since the 1930s when we just started to get to that place. Honestly, in the 1990s, when you came out with all the urban, all the urban brands, so the Rock Aware, the Baby Fats, the Fat Farms, like that stuff started in the 90s. So technically, we are only what. 30 years in and that's why we haven't been able to compete with the 80 year old brands but we're getting there you know so that visibility and just honestly sharing my network that's what i do to make sure that i'm trying to get us to that level i can't do it alone <laughs> but there are a lot of other black women they work in the fashion industry that I'm friends with that's about the same mission as me and we were just like we got to get the black people out there we got to get them out there that's why you have harlem fashion row that's why you got um What's that one? Uh, Luxor and Fish. These are all black owned women companies that help uh, black women in fashion. So it's just, it's not a lot of us that's trying to get that mission out there. It's probably a handful. So it's taking longer, but it's going to happen. And, you know, even after me, it's going to happen. And I'm going to pass it down. And it's going to keep happening because we got to build up that history. Like we got to get to that space. Well, it's not even history. To, well, it is history, but it's also our own people supporting. I think that's I'll be ready to smack them, girl. Like, but <laughs> uh, it's our people supporting those brands. But it's just like it's to me, it's a it's still history. It's a lack of knowing your history. So it's just like if you even and not even talking about Black history, I'm talking about history as a whole. How these what these brands think about us, what these brands, who their target consumer is, because they're talking consumer ain't us. We just the ones buying the shit, you know. Right. So it's just like actually knowing your history and being aware. But it's some people who are not aware. They are freaking and i always say this fashion is psychological they are freaking mind like their minds are gone when it comes to like designer items like i could say i have a designer item too but it's just like it's it's a gucci it has to be a, a louis vuitton and i just i chalk it up to as a lack of knowledge i chalk it up to insecurities because that's why you have a whole bunch of people wearing fake designer too because it's all up here like if somebody think i got on gucci then i'm looked at or viewed in a different way if right. someone thinks i'm wearing red bottom and people will buy fake things just to live up to this status quo that is some insecure ass shit if you ask me excuse my french no girl it's, look it's, you can it's that's all you want here me, i don't know i think that people who wear designer brands are looking for validation yes. for themselves because they're not happy with themselves and that's why that's my personal opinion including celebrities because they also have to maintain a certain stature too right. so people are looking at them like these are the people with the money so they're not wearing something that's four or five thousand dollars from this well-known designer then you got industry people talking about them like did you see with that person i don't know they're the worst because the internet will tear up a celebrity for what they wore right. or what they look like so they feel like they even more so have to keep up the persona so i'm not as mad at them for doing it but it's just like somebody got snapped the hell out of it 
and somebody got to leave. Someone with it. celebrities, you know, they're getting paid. They're exactly. paid. Exactly. They're getting paid, or you know, it's like it's free publicity too. Like some of them getting paid, some of them not getting paid. But it's just like they're just so used to it. And whether they're dressing themselves, or they have a PR person that's specifically putting them in these things, or they have a management team, or the record label does just like do this, do that. Like some of these people don't even have control over what they wear. Sometimes they might want to, in a lot of some of them might want to go a completely different direction what they look, but they label won't allow it, or their PR person is telling them to do this instead so a lot of times i feel like some of them is just lost in the sauce <laughs>